What in the world are we up to this week? Stay tuned. Hey guys, today we're in Jamestown, Virginia at the first settlement. We're standing in front of John Smith. Guys, we're here all day. We're going to have a great time learning all the history. So we're taking you guys with us. Thank you for joining us. If you love historical places, put Jamestown on your bucket list. All right, so we're archeologists here at Jamestown and we're doing a survey over here to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be damaged or disturbed before moving a sign here. Uh, we just have to make sure that there's no uh, features in the ground that uh, would be of like historical significance to Jamestown uh, that we are going to end up damaging before uh, moving our sign. It was so great to see these archaeologists work. The Jamestown experience actually begins at the visitor center where you watch a video and it tells you about the land. There were also various tours you could take given by the National Park Rangers. We're at Colonial National Historical Park. And here at Colonial, we preserve the sites and stories of Yorktown battlefields in Jamestown Island. So Yorktown is known as the last major battle of the Revolutionary War. And here at Jamestown, we're known as the first permanent English settlement. So for our program today, we're gonna to learn a little bit about how Jamestown was a fort and turned into a port town. And to do that, we're going to explore the area of Newtown, which is over in this direction here. So if you'd like to join me on this guided walk, follow me and let's head into Newtown. About Jamestown and its expansion, we should first talk briefly about the early years of Jamestown. So in 1607, 104 men and boys are going to sell from England and they're going to plant their settlement here. They're going to choose this area for a few reasons. The first is that they wanted to choose a place that they could easily defend. They were concerned that the Spanish would find their settlement and wipe them out. So they wanted to make sure that their fort, their settlement was protected. In addition to that, they chose this area because it provided a deep water port. So what that meant is that larger ships could dock right off to land and then any goods or the people in the ship could just hop right onto land. And then the last reason they chose this location is because they said it was not inhabited during this, this time. So as they looked around, they did not see any people, they did not see any structures. But what they would learn is that this area here was part of the Paspahe territory. So the Paspahe lived about six miles from where we're located, but this was their territory. It was part of their seasonal hunting grounds. So although it was not built up, it's going to create some tension because it is claimed by this group. So eventually the colonists are going to build a fort and if you turn to the side here you can see a representation of that fort. Each one of those logs that you see in the ground uh, creates that palisade wall for that early 1607 fortification. And I do have an artist's depiction here of what this fort looks like. Historic documentation that sells a that shows a roughly drawn fort, and another reason we know this is through the archaeology, the excavation of this site. So, as I mentioned, artifacts are a way to understand daily lives of past peoples through the objects that are left behind. And I have an artifact here that is uncovered in the thousands across this landscape. This walking tour was nearly an hour long, and we learned so many interesting facts about Jamestown and the surrounding area. They were digging to get to the natural place so they could make these bricks. Not only does it tell us about the activity, but it tells us about the mindset of these colonists as well. So they're really investing in this area. So we're gonna start out with wooden structures, but now we're gonna have homes with brick foundations. And by 1638, we're going to have the first all-brick structure, all-brick home. The walking tour gave us an in-depth insight of what it would have been like living there in the 17th century. It was like taking a step back in time. We in 
enjoyed walking through Newtown. It was the area that was a seaport in the 17th century. And you can see where the buildings were by the signs and the bricks outlines. These are not the original bricks, but you could tell where the original foundations were by the archeology span discoveries. And so they put the brick foundations in place so that you could see what the area looked like back in the 17th century. We even got to see the ruins of an 18th century brick house that belonged to the Amblers, a prominent family of Jamestown. As you walked through Newtown, there were all kinds of signs giving you history of what happened there. And there's Keith standing by the James River. It was so amazing to walk among these foundations and visualize what it was like there years and years ago. Jamestown is located on an island and some of the colonists actually got sick because they were drinking water that had too much salt. So they began digging wells. And as you walk along this property, you can see where some of those original wells were located. The first timber church was built in 1617. Then later came the brick structure. Archaeologists have found so many artifacts, which we'll show you in next week's video. But as we walk along this cemetery, there were so many interesting things to see. We got to walk in the footsteps of Captain John Smith and Pocahontas at the site of the original James Fort. It was located in 1994 by archaeologists. They uncovered numerous remains of buildings that were once used by the Jamestown colonists. Through their work, the archaeologists actually found a barracks, the blacksmith's shop, the governor's house, and a large storehouse. Through their archaeological work, they have discovered burial grounds from 1607. It is so amazing to see. This is a commemorative model that was built to show us what the fort looked like. And they know this from their archeological work and also from records. If you ever get the opportunity to visit Jamestown in person, you will not be disappointed. This was super interesting. It was the place of the first substantial church, the 1608 church, and the walls depict where the building actually was. And this is where the Powhatan's favorite daughter, Pocahontas, married John Rolfe in April of 1614. This place was even visited by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in 2007. The church tower is another interesting place to see while at Jamestown. This 17th century brick church tower is the last surviving above ground structure from the days when Jamestown was the capital of Virginia. It is amazing 
the lengths that they've gone to to save this tower and to rebuild this church on the spot where it sat. You can see this time lapse of the archaeologist as they worked on this church prior to its restoration. Visitors are transported to the 17th century as they walk through this new Memorial Church exhibit. It offers a full-scale interpretation of Jamestown's 1617 to 18 church. Literally, you can look into portals of the past. They have glass panels in the floor which allow you to see down into the original foundation of this historic place. We literally spent the entire day here on Jamestown Island. We have learned so much of the history of Jamestown through the work of the archaeologist. The 1861 Fort Pocahontas was especially interesting to us as we got to walk along those earthworks that were the remains from the Civil War. While on Jamestown Island, we saw several bald eagles, as this is their natural habitat. It was so cool. Thanks so much for coming with us to Jamestown. Wow, so interesting, so much history here. Pocahontas and I just had a nice little conversation. It was great to be here at Jamestown. So much history. It's amazing. If you'd like to see more of our videos, click the video that just popped up on your screen.